Okay, folks, this is JP Duval of Public Safety Canada. Uh, I will just, uh, we'll get started momentarily. So if the uh, presenters can turn their cameras on, we will then um, hand it over to uh, Derek to start. Uh, actually, JP Tasker is here, um, from the National Press Theatre, and will be um, um, the moderator for this press conference. So I'll hand it over to uh, Mr. Tasker. Wait one second, JP. Recording in progress. Uh, J.P. Tasker. I'm a reporter at CBC News. I'll be the moderator for today's press conference. We have here with us today officials from the Government of Canada. They're holding a virtual technical briefing to provide us with an update on the 2024 wildfire season. Uh, this is a technical briefing and the questions are on for attribution basis. So we have folks here from Public Safety Canada, the Canadian Meteorological Centre, uh, Operations and Environment and Climate Change Canada, the Canadian Forest Service at Natural Resources Canada, and the Emergency Management, Management Directorate at Indigenous Services Canada. So we will uh, hear the presentation and then we'll get to questions after. It'll be one question, one follow-up. So just stand by. Thank you so much. Are you folks ready from, I'm not sure who's going first for the virtual briefing, but whoever it is, you can start speaking now. Okay, thanks. I'll take it from here. It's Derek Traherne. I am the Director General of the Government Operations Centre at Public Safety Canada, also known as the GOC. Um, the mandate, uh, for those of you who haven't been on previous tech briefs of the Government Operations Centre, um, on behalf of Public Safety, is to lead and support the coordination of any integrated federal response to incidents affecting the national interest, what we call cyclical events like floods, fires, and hurricanes as well. And we work closely with uh, federal and provincial agencies and other emergency partners. Le mandat du Centre des opérations du gouvernement, uh, au nom du gouvernement du Canada, c'est de diriger et de soutenir la coordination de l'intervention en cas d'incident touchant l'intérêt national. Et nous travaillons avec, en proche, en collaboration avec les organismes fédéraux, provinciaux et les autres partenaires en gestion d'urgence. Our purpose uh, today, as usual, is to give you an update, a look at the current events and also the wildfire season forecast for the coming month. Alors, uh, permettez-moi de commencer par souligner qu'à travers le Canada, tous les gouvernements et les équipes de gestion des urgences sont pleinement engagés dans la réponse. Uh, nous avons été bénis à ce point par une météo fa favorable et nous avons connu moins d'activités de feux de forêt que, que prévu et que de l'année passée. However, I should point out that uh, we are now into July and we are heading into the peak of the typical fire season. So what we're seeing today is an increase in fire activity generally. And uh, as always, it's important to note that wildfire activity this season is running uh, far behind the pace and scale of what we witnessed last year, which is great news. But uh, we are in the now into the heart of our fire season, and um, we are tracking carefully a number of uh, fires across the country and the expansion of general fire wildfire activity. So far this year, um, on the whole, things have been much improved, but we have had a number of fire events threaten communities, as well as critical infrastructure that Canadians depend on daily. So we've seen fires threaten Churchill Falls in Newfoundland. Um, at the end of June, we saw evacuations in Fort Murray, Fort McMurray, rather, Alberta, and we've seen uh, fires around energy facilities now in July. So we're keeping a close eye on that and working with provincial partners who are also um, taking strong actions to protect those communities and those critical infrastructure assets. Les Canadiens peuvent être assurés que malgré les menaces uh, posées par les feux de forêt, leur gouvernement fédéral et provinciaux territoriaux travaillent ensemble pour minimiser les risques pour la vie, les biens et les infrastructures critiques. So the GOC uh, continues to monitor and report uh, extensively on fire activity across Canada with all the partners you see here today. And we provide uh, national situational awareness to senior officials and decision makers and, and all partners to make sure that we have uh, shared and common verified information. So this, the Canadian Interagency Forest Fire Centre, otherwise known as CIFSI, is reporting today that we have 284 active wildfires um, with full response. That's up by 60 in the last week or so. 
Uh, we have 80 out of control, 135 that are being held. All those numbers have increased in the last couple of weeks. And the areas of greatest risk uh, from wildfire, as has been a theme this summer, we include British Columbia and the Northwest Territories. There are four priority fires there, and we have significant mobilization of resources from provinces to assist operations in those active areas. Alberta, of course, is another area that we are keeping a close eye on. That will be compounded by significant heat events, which my colleagues from ECCC will speak to today. Those heat events are tr tracking across BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Northeast Ontario, and to some extent the Maritimes, although what we're seeing is the remnants of Hurricane Barrel now heading east uh, and depositing a lot of precipitation, which is good news, but we're uh, also keeping an eye on the potential for local flash flooding. So we are going to see some extreme temperatures right now for the next couple of weeks into the or a couple of days rather into the weekend. And at some point next week, we will see another heat uh, wave across various parts of the country. And my colleagues from Environment Canada and Climate Change will speak to that. So in to repeat, then we have an increase in new wildfires in Western Canada. We have significant concentrations of smoke regionally in BC and Alberta. And the national preparedness level, um, which SIFC is the uh, the designee of is at level four. We have a number of provinces also have escalated their preparedness level, and they are actively sharing resources across the country. Um, again, the fire year over year comparison to last year and ten year averages is generally promising, but our predictions for August and September remain similar to those of last season and to the beginning of this season when we did the original forecast. Um, I'm happy to say that major international assistance has not yet been needed to manage the wildfire situation in Canada, but the lines of communication with an international partners are open and conversations are being had in case that's required. And I'd like to note that also uh, the U.S. and Mexico and others are having uh, quite significant fire seasons, so we're keeping an eye on that as well in terms of um, their needs uh, or the ability to help Canada should it come to that. Um, again, I'll just reiterate that in Canada, as always, emergency management is a shared responsibility. They are managed first at the local, municipal, and provincial levels. Um, and if the emergency overwhelms PT capacity, the province or territory can seek requests for a federal assistance, which is coordinated by my organization, the Government Operations Center. I'm happy to report that no federal RFAs have been required at this point. And um, as we all know, the situation can change very quickly. But as I mentioned earlier, all partners across Canada are working together. They were prepared earlier and they are responding aggressively to fires that are threatening communities and infrastructure. Alors, je vais maintenant céder la parole à mes collègues d'environnement et de changement climatique Canada, ainsi que de ressources naturelles Canada, afin de vous donner des détails scientifiques de cet aperçu. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Derek. Mon nom est Sébastien Chouinard, puis je suis le directeur exécutif au sein du service météorologique chez Environnement et Changement climatique Canada. Donc, les observations des 12 derniers mois, montrées sur la carte de gauche sur la diapo diapositive 4, montrent que pratiquement toutes les régions du pays ont observé des températures au-dessus des valeurs normales. Nous pouvons cependant constater que les trois derniers mois, montrés sur la carte de droite, ont laissé place à des températures plus près des moyennes saisonnières. Il faut cependant garder en tête que ce portrait peut masquer des événements significatifs qui sont survenus récemment, comme par exemple la vague de chaleur en juin dans l'est du pays. Un tel événement est maintenant beaucoup plus probable de se produire et de se répéter en raison des changements climatiques. It should be noted that this picture will continue to evolve over the coming weeks and months, particularly for the western part of the country, country which is currently experiencing an intense heat wave. This type of event increases the risk of forest fires in regions affected by heat waves. In terms of precipitation, here too the situation over the last 12 months shown on the left slide on the left side of slide five shows a significant deficit, particularly in, in western region. On the map on the right, we can see that the eastern prairies, Ontario and Quebec, have recently been affected by systems that have left significant amounts of precipitation in their wake. This precipitation has limited the potential for forest fire to develop in these regions. Regardons maintenant la diapo 6 euh, euh, pour voir ce que les plus récentes prévisions montrent pour la, pour la période estivale. Donc, pour la période de juillet à septembre, les prévisions indiquent de hautes probabilités pour des températures de 1 à 2 degrés Celsius au-dessus des normales pour l'ensemble du pays, 
alors que certaines régions comme le nord du Manitoba et de l'Ontario pourraient avoir un écart encore plus important avec les valeurs de saison. Du côté des précipitations, les prochaines semaines devraient apporter peu de précipitations pour les régions de l'ouest du pays, alors que d'autres régions devraient avoir des quantités de précipitations se rapprochant des normales de saison. I would like to remind that ECCC has forecasting system that allow, that allow us to predict how smoke from wildfire will be spread across uh, across different regions according to the wind forecast at different altitudes. The example shown on slide 7 has enabled ECCC meteorologists to predict the dispersion of smoke from fire over northern Alberta and warm affected and warm affected population to air quality advisory. ECCC will issue air quality special statement on or advisory depending on the level of threat. As shown on slide 8, this information is available at all time on the ECCC website. The graph on the right shows the number of air quality bulletin issues issued for each year over the last five years. The year 2023 marked by an intense wildfire activity is indicated by the red line. The orange line showing the number of bulletin issues so far in 2024 shows that the quantity, uh, quantity issued this year is much lower than last year and much closer to the monthly average of bulletin issued. issued. J'invite maintenant mon collègue de, de Ressources naturelles Canada, Mike Norton, à prendre la parole. Thanks, Sébastien. My name is Michael Norton. I'm the Director General of Natural Resources Canada's Northern Forestry Centre. Happy to join you today from Edmonton and acknowledge I'm speaking to you from Treaty 6 territory. I'll provide some information on our latest seasonal wildland fire outlook building from Sébastien's comments for July and August. Nous commençons à observer une augmentation de l'activité des feux de forêt et nos pensées vont aux communautés et aux familles actuellement touchées par ces événements. Je tiens également à remercier les premiers intervenants, les gestionnaires des incendies et les, les nombreuses autres personnes qui luttent contre ces feux. Les augmentations que nous commençons à, à, à observer suivent le modèle attendu du comportement des incendies que nous observons généralement à cette période de la saison des feux de forêt. C'est ce que montre clairement ce graphique que vous connaissez sans doute déjà. This graph shows the cumulative area burned annually. The trend lines demonstrate that typically we see an early peak in the spring before forest vegetation starts to green up. Fire activity then usually slows down in early June before picking up again through the summer. As temperatures increase and factors like drought, precipitation, and increased lightning activity come into play. Cela, cela étant dit, il est important de souligner que de grands incendies sont possibles à tout moment de l'année et que si l'on considère les prévisions pour juillet et août, le risque d'une augmentation de l'activité des feux demeure, en particulier dans l'ouest et le nord du Canada. So far this year, however, at a national scale, wildland fire activity and total area burned are tracking at or even slightly below average for this time of year. On the next slide, les cartes des deux diapos diapositives suivantes montrent l'indice de sévérité prévu, c'est-à-dire les conditions mensuelles prévues pour les feux de forêt dans l'ensemble du pays et l'anomalie de sévérité prévue qui indique les régions où les conditions d'incendie seront supérieures ou inférieures à la normale. Overall, drought conditions have improved somewhat in the prairies, where some areas have seen increased rainfall in the past weeks and months. However, it's important to keep in mind that drought conditions need extended periods of precipitation to have a long-term impact on soil moisture levels. At the same time, drought conditions have intensified in Northwest Territories and abnormally dry conditions have developed in Yukon. En juillet, nous prévoyons qu'une période prolongée de temps chaud et sec dans l'Ouest s'étendra progressivement vers l'Est, ce qui rendra probable une augmentation de l'activité des incendies. Clearly, the current heat wave being experienced across much of the western part of the country is driving fire risk, at least in the short term and expected dry conditions may increase the intensity and extent of drought over the next couple of months. The potential for active fire lies predominantly in Western Canada from British Columbia and Yukon, 
eastward toward Ontario. And on the August slide, looking ahead to August, forecasted patches of precipitation across east central Alberta through to northern Manitoba may prevent widespread fire in those areas. However, the risk for western and northern Alberta, as well as most of western Canada, will remain above average. As fire risk increases, it is more important than ever to avoid accidentally starting fires. Several provinces have put in place fire bans, and I encourage all Canadians to take great care when working, living, or playing in or near our forests. With that, I'll hand things over to my colleague at Indigenous Services Canada. Thank you. Merci. Bonjour, je m'appelle Natasha Klink et je suis gestionnaire des opérations à la Direction de la gestion des urgences à Services Autochtones Canada. À Services Autochtones Canada, nous travaillons en collaboration avec les Premières Nations en prévision de la saison des feux de forêt et autres événements météorologiques extrêmes. The climate crisis is making catastrophic emergency events such as wildfires more common across the country. These wildfire events affect First Nation communities and threaten their ability to hunt, fish, and carry out traditional lifestyle practices and ceremonies. ISC understands that First Nations communities are disproportionately exposed to the effects of these events. Between April 1st and June 30th, 2024, there have been fewer emergency events impacting First Nations compared to the same time last year. This is good news, and we will continue to work with First Nations to support their preparedness and response to wildfire events moving forward. Services Autochtones Canada travaille en collaboration avec ses partenaires des Premières Nations, ainsi qu'avec d'autres ministères gouvernementaux, pour réagir aux feux de forêt au fur et à mesure qu'ils se produisent. Ces événements menacent de plus en plus la santé, la sécurité et la stabilité économique des Canadiens. Et Services aux Autochtones Canada sera là pour aider les Premières Nations à accéder aux services d'aide d'urgence afin de les aider à rester en sécurité et préparer à ce type de catastrophe naturelle. As of July 11th, ISC is monitoring five wildfires which are impacting or have the potential to impact First Nations communities in British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and the Yukon. As of July 10th, one First Nation in Alberta has issued an evacuation order for one of their three communities as a wildfire is in proximity to the road leading to the community. ISC is on standby along with other partners to support all impacted communities if needed. In response to these potential wildfire events, ISC will continue to provide support and available funding through the Emergency Management Assistance Program. The Emergency Management Assistance Program is the single window for natural hazard emergency events in First Nations communities, which assists First Nations with the recovery work required to restore them to pre-disaster condition as rapidly as possible. Specific investments for fiscal year 2024-2025 include $10.9 million in funding for FireSmart initiatives to enhance wildfire resilience, $18 million in non-structural mitigation and preparedness funding to enhance community-based resilience. In addition, as of April 1st, 2024, 12.96 million in capacity funding is being provided to support 255 individual full or part-time emergency management coordinator positions in First Nations communities, tribal councils, and First Nations organizations. This support provides First Nations with valuable emergency preparedness and planning capacity and underscores the department's dedication to building resilience within First Nation communities, helping them withstand and recover from the impacts of natural hazards such as wildfires. ISC will continue to partner with First Nations communities to ensure that their safety, security, and well-being and to enhance their emergency management capacity throughout this wildfire season and after. Nous savons que les feux de forêt représentent un danger naturel qui peut poser des risques pour les communautés des Premières Nations. Services Autochtones Canada sera là pendant et après cette saison des feux de forêt pour offrir son soutien aux Premières Nations dans le besoin. Merci. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. We'll now turn to the question and answer portion of this event. I see a number of reporters are on Zoom. If you have a question, please use the raise hand function on Zoom and I will give you the floor shortly. So I'll just give you a moment to register your interest if you do have a question. All right, we have Yasmin uh, Ganya from CBC Vancouver. 
one second. All right, go ahead, Yasmin. Thanks, JP. The BC government says it's seeking out of province help to fight fight fires this season. I know some firefighters from Nova Scotia are on their way here now. Um, has BC reached out to the federal government for assistance or have the two levels of government been having discussions about that? Um, I'm happy to take that question. We, um, we're in contact with the provinces every day via our regional offices. So those relationships are strong. Uh, we have no indication right now that they're looking for federal assistance. Um, Mike may want to comment on the, um, the movement of, of firefighters generally in Canada, but CIFC controls that. Um, and as I said, um, provinces are actively supporting each other at this point. Um, in fact, I think we saw a number of uh, firefighters move into uh, Alberta yesterday from several provinces as well. Um, and as I said, we are starting to have conversations um, with the U.S. and others to, in case requests are needed. But at this point, we have no federal re request for assistance. Mike, do you want to comment on that? Nothing to add, Derek, subject to the reporter's uh, potential follow-up. Thank you. Um, can you speak generally about the federal resources potentially available for British Columbia and other provinces should they need it? Um, Mike, do you want to speak to that one in terms of international assistance? If we're looking for, you know, wild firefighters in the, in the first instance, then I can speak to a little bit about the, the federal house if that uh, doesn't answer the question. Yeah, happy to, Derek. Thanks. Um, so just to build on comments that, that Derek made, um, uh, wildfire fighting in Canada and with fire prone countries around the world is heavily based and has always been based on the principle of, of mutual aid. Uh, where one jurisdiction um, that has lower fire risk can contribute firefighting um, resources, both people and equipment as needed to other jurisdictions that may be facing uh, a higher pressure. So in Canada, coordinated primarily through the Canadian Interagency Forest Fire Centre, the first line of additional um, resources for a province like British Columbia would be to ask through CIFSI to other provinces that can provide uh, assistance. And as Derek said, we're seeing some of that. There's much lower fire risk and uh, fire load uh, in the east, and, and there's some movement toward the west. Um, as uh, you'll remember from previous years, we also have the ability to call on assistance from our international um, partners. We are not um, not substantially there yet, but certainly this is part of uh, forecasting and preparedness for the future. And uh, and CIFC is in uh, active communication with all of our um, standard and trusted international uh, partners to uh, to start laying the uh, the groundwork, such that if things escalate to the point of really needing some international help, that that um, that our partners um, uh, both within Canada and internationally are able to. Uh, to respond uh, uh, quickly, and as you'll remember from previous uh, previous years, that system is uh, is a well oiled um, machine, um, and uh, expect uh, expect the same will be true this year if it uh, if it comes to that. Derek. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, in terms of other federal supports, I mean, obviously, if requests come in, and you've seen this last year and the year before that. Um, you know, the federal government has a range of, of supports that it can provide, both uh, from regulatory perspective. Uh, um, employment insurance, obviously Indigenous services has commented on the extensive work they do with First Nations and programming and supports there. Um, we have, as well as, as you may remember from uh, past discussions, the Humanitarian Workforce, which is a government program which funds NGOs to build capacity so they, they can be deployed either bilaterally or by the federal government in their quest of a, in the instance of a request for federal assistance. Um, and then we have uh, private in the past, uh, many kinds of real life supports, incident command, uh, additional planning, uh, aircraft and, and ships when it comes to DFO and Coast Guard and others. Um, and so there's a number of things the federal government can bring to the table there. And then, of course, always, you know, uh, should it be the last resort and should it be a real crisis, the Canadian Armed Forces are there, should they be required. Um, but they're not specifically trained as, as type one or two firefighters, which is what Mike is speaking to. And in the first instance, when it comes to fighting fires, those are the kind of folks you need. And so that's where we rely on CIFSI and provinces to share resources, which they do admirably, um, and or international assistance. Hopefully that uh, answers the question. All right, thanks very much. Uh, Catherine Deep, Radio Canada, à vous la parole. Catherine. 
Catherine? Okay, we're going to move on. Uh, Chloe Bourquin, La Presse. Chloe? Okay. Uh, Stéphane Blé, La Presse Canadienne. Est-ce que vous m'entendez? Oui. Vas-y. Oui, en fait, je regarde euh, vos tableaux et j'essaie de comprendre qu'est-ce que ça veut dire. Euh, je regarde, excusez-moi, euh, 284 interventions complètes. Qu'est-ce que c'est une intervention complète? Uh, Mike, do you want to speak to that one? I think he's asking a question about technical firefighting, sort of. Uh, I think that's a, just um, not super familiar with the terminology, but go ahead. Uh, thanks, Derek. Je regrette, mais j'ai manqué la moitié de la question. Est-ce que vous pouvez la répéter, s'il vous plaît? Est-ce que vous m'entendez? Oui, oui c'est plus clair maintenant, merci. Donc, j'aimerais savoir ce que ça veut dire. Intervention complète. C'est écrit qu'il y a 284 interventions complètes. Ah, ah merci. OK, je comprends. Oui, euh, j'inviterai euh, mon collègue Jonathan Boucher, chercheur scientifique, à, à répondre à, à cette question. Merci. Jonathan. Oui, pas de problème. Bonjour, Stéphane. Euh, ce qu'on entend par intervention complète, ce sont vraiment les feux qui ont des, un effort de suppression sur l'entièreté euh, du feu et de son périmètre en tant que tel. Donc, ce qui est visé pour ces feux-là, c'est l'extinction complète des feux. Lorsqu'on prend le, une intervention qui serait limitée euh, ou euh, en, en anglais qu'on pourrait parler extensive, euh, à ce moment-là, on vise potentiellement certes, que certains secteurs du périmètre de feu qui pourraient menacer des infrastructures ou des communautés. Puis, on pourrait laisser brûler allègrement les autres secteurs du feu qui ne menacent, euh, qui ne menacent pas de biens ou d'infrastructures, par exemple. J'ai besoin de précision. Qu quand on parle de 284 interventions complètes, c'est oui. actuellement… Oui, tout à fait. C'est les feux qui sont présentement en activité et qui subissent une intervention complète. Correct. Et là, les… Les feux hors contrôle, contenus et maîtrisés, ils font partie des interventions complètes? Oui, euh, exactement. Dans le fond, euh, c'est ça, c'est que les feux euh, qui, sont, euh, qui sont maîtrisés sont, par exemple, à un stade d'une de, 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 étape de, de, qui suit la suppression. En fait, quand le feu est hors contrôle, c'est un feu qu'on n'a pas encore euh, pris action dessus ou on ne peut pas prendre action parce que l'intensité est trop élevée pour nos ressources de, de suppression. Par la suite, on vise à contenir le feu, donc à limiter sa progression, maîtriser, c'est donc sécuriser encore plus la progression de ces feux-là, vraiment travailler sur une profondeur de la bordure afin d'éteindre tous, euh, tous les foyers euh, de feu. Puis lorsque le feu est éteint, c'est qu'on a vraiment travaillé sur toute la superficie du feu afin d'éteindre euh, tous les, euh, les foyers euh, d'incendie. Actuellement, vous êtes mis sur mute. Actuellement, en date, en date du 12 juillet, il y a 284 feux de forêt au pays. Actifs, dont euh, qui sont sous euh, suppression euh, complète. C'est-à-dire que, par exemple, ici au Québec, on a ce qu'on appelle la limite nordique. Au-dessus de la limite nordique, ce sont des feux qu'on ne va pas prendre action par défaut. On va prendre action simplement s'ils menacent des infrastructures ou des communautés. Sinon, ils peuvent brûler librement dans la forêt qui n'est pas attribuée, par exemple, pour l'industrie forestière. 284 feux de forêt actifs. Sous intervention. Sous intervention. Merci. D'accord. Oui. Uh, Catherine Dib, Radio-Canada. Vas-y. OK. All right. Is there any other questions? If there are, just use the raise hand function. OK. Uh, Chloé Bourquin. Vas-y. Oui, est-ce que vous m'entendez? Oui, vas-y. 
Euh, J'aurais aimé vous demander, euh, par rapport en fait, au Québec en particulier, j'ai cru voir sur la carte, par exemple, des prévisions des risques. Euh, le Québec avait l'air d'être euh, dans une couleur plutôt bleue, donc j'imagine que le risque est peut-être plus faible. Mais j'aurais aimé vous entendre là-dessus avant d'interpréter quoi que ce soit. Oui, en, encore une fois, j'invite euh, Jonathan à répondre. Oui, pas de problème. Euh, en fait, ce, qu ce qui a été présenté par Mike, c'est donc les prévisions pour la saison qui reste, euh, donc les, euh, ben, principalement le mois de juillet et le mois d'août. Ce sont des prévisions à long terme. Évidemment, euh, on a beaucoup plus de confiance dans les 3, 4, euh, maximum 5, 7 prochains jours. Là, on regarde les tendances pour faire ces prévisions-là. Ce qu'on voit, c'est qu'effectivement, le Québec, surtout dans l'est euh, de la province, il est attendu à ce qu'on soit autour, voire même peut-être en deçà des, des normales de saison pour cette période-là. Euh, donc, c'est vraiment ce qui est prévu pour le moment, mais ça n'empêche pas que dans les, les jours qui suivent, principalement le week-end, on s'attend à des conditions favorables à, à, la pro à la progression des feux dans certains secteurs euh, de la forêt boréale au, au nord, puis qui sont particulièrement favorables à, à l'allumage de feux de foudre. D'accord. Et euh, j'aurais peut-être aimé euh, revenir sur... Euh... J'ai l'impression que c'est euh, peut-être contre-intuitif le fait qu'il y ait à la fois euh, des, des, des températures qui soient assez élevées, il y a un risque de sécheresse, mais de ce que j'ai compris, euh, en fait, il y a eu un problème avec la traduction à un moment et je n'ai pas exactement bien compris le, le lien entre la sécheresse et la sécheresse du sol. Est-ce qu'on pourrait juste revenir là-dessus? Euh, oui, je pourrais peut-être... Euh demander à nos collègues d'Environnement Canada de compléter euh, à ce niveau-là au besoin. Euh, il y a donc évidemment une sécheresse à certains endroits, mais euh, la pluie peut venir euh, vraiment tasser ça pour des périodes plus courtes là, pour ce qui est du, euh, vraiment du, du danger d'incendie des prochains jours. Euh, je ne sais pas si ça cerne un peu le besoin de la question, sinon peut-être laisser les gens d'Environnement Canada je compléter. Peut ouais, je peux peut-être couvrir un petit peu. Il y a, dans, pour les régions de l'Ontario et le Québec, il y a eu des systèmes importants qui ont qui, qui ont amené de la pluie, ce qui fait que le, ça réduit considérablement le risque de, de feu de forêt. Évidemment, il y a des épisodes où bon, il y a moins de précipitations, il y a, des, il y a de la sécheresse, puis il y a du, euh, des températures plus chaudes, mais les périodes sont relativement courtes là, de ce qui est prévu pour les prochains jours, ce qui fait que la, la balance entre les précipitations qu'on a eues, puis la chaleur, puis l'évaporation, fait en sorte que le risque est quand même assez réduit pour l'instant pour la région du Québec. D'accord. OK. OK, merci. OK. I don't see any other raised hands, so I think that will conclude today's press conference. Thank you so much to the officials for your presentation and for taking our questions, and thanks to the reporters for participating. That will end today's press conference. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Merci. Merci. Merci à tous.